A lecture on love, July the thirtieth, two thousand twenty-three. I didn't come here to judge; I came here to love, to be a source of all loving things. And as I was told, before I do anything, prayer, deeds, visualization, choices to be made, for me to say. I call upon the source of all loving things. I am the source of all loving things. Love is the ultimate in life, in creation. It is the power. It is the great I am. It is the infinite source of all. It is the governance of all there is. Love. Is what calls everything into existence, nurtures and maintains it. Love is the great God, Goddess, our great Mother, Father, the source from which we've come, return to, and exist within. I once asked Divine Mother, what would she have me to do, and she said to me. To write and lecture about the ways of love. She also told me, love is not love is the most important thing. That love is the substance that bonds all things together in creation, holds everything together in oneness, oneness within the source itself. She said, divinity loves itself, all of itself. It cannot be divided or separated from itself. Love ensures that this is so. Upon hearing this from her, I asked, "If love is the most important thing, the ultimate force, then why do we suffer?" She said to me that there can. Never be separation from the one infinite divine source," she said. "We are express offsprings of divine source, and like divine source, we are procreated with creative abilities, and given freedom of choice: what to create, be creative, to experience what we've created." Then she said. The reason why we suffer is because when we create without inviting love into the process, we create without love. It's an attempt of separation from the infinite source, which cannot be allowed. The pain we feel and experience is the results of our localized will in the infinite one, trying to upset the will. Of the ultimate infinite one, which cannot be allowed. Separation is not possible, and there is only one, the one in which we all are within. Love bonds and assures harmonious oneness within the infinite one. Love is infinite source. Infinite source is love. So one can say that. Is love that brought and brings us all together, and have brought forth everything. It is the womb from which we all come, and still is within. In a way, I guess a great analogy would be for our loveless creating. It's like a baby trying to break free from the umbilical cord within the womb. The very thing that gives it life nourishes it and sustains it and maintains it with all that it needs to exist. This is how vital and vitally important love is to us, and the whole of creation in every respect and everything. So when we are told, reminded constantly, that love is the most vital thing, this is why. As a side note, 
I once received a word from my loving spirit guide. She told me that our ability to imagine was given to us to enhance well-being, goodness, joy, beauty, light, and love in life, in creation. When we don't use our creative abilities, our imagination in this way, we error, sin, miss the mark. Once again, it all comes back to love. To do this is the proper aligned use of our imaginations with divine's will. Love is the one thing every living organism desires. Indeed, I would say that everything created desires it. We need it for our very existence. Love is the one thing that all human beings, animals, and plant life can agree upon, that we all benefit from the expression of the spirit of love. And those who are filled with love and nurture with love thrive for life force energy. It is the umbilical cord that connects us to the infinite source, the sole provider of all our needs, wants, desires, and accomplishments of our imaginative endeavors that manifest in perfect, joyous, harmonious ways for us and for all others. Can one not honestly say that all ills and sufferings are caused by the lack of love? No, no one can say that. And we all know this to be an undeniable truth. Love cures all ills, all impoverishments, and it eliminates all arguments, wars, and strives. To put it plainly, our gift of freedom of choice is simply a question from infinite source. Are we to choose love or not? That is the choice we make every day in everything, moment by moment. We are all aware of the consequences of not inviting the spirit of love into everything and all of our choices. For not one being is willing for, for, one, for one being not to be willing to invite love will suffer consequences thereof. In our own life, we, we have experienced it and we can see it all around us. The results is evident. But I want to shine light and love upon the benefits of choosing love, which I was once told by my loving spirit guide, is the divine choice. That is, she said, in life there are choices that we are to make. There are choices and there is the divine choice. And each choice we make brings forth more choices from that choice. And so it goes. This is the process in which we experience through life. That was part of the answer I received when I asked her, do we have freedom of choice or is our lives already predestined? Out of interest to anyone, she said, in a way, both things are true. We do have freedom of choice and our lives are predestined. That is, it is pre-planned. She said we chose our lives. We chose to come here. We chose our bodies, our families. The genre of our life's story, the characters that will play a part in, in, in it. We chose our families and we chose our children, if we are to have any. Basically, we choose everything before we come in. But once we come in, we still have the power of choice, either to stick to the plan, which leads to ultimate success, 
or to deviate from the plan, which can result in mediocre or devastating consequences. But ultimately, she said, for us to complete the mission with ultimate success, it requires us to, co to cultivate making the divine choices in our lives. And the divine choice is the choices that we make from the spirit of love. How can one cultivate being a chooser of the divine choices in life? Really, there is only one way that I know of, and that is to become more and be loving and cultivate it as a state of being. For our state of being dictates our choices naturally. A loving person will make loving choices in their deeds, thoughts, desires, interactions, and perceptions of life and others and of themselves. Of course, a person who is malnourished in love will make choices from that state of being. So really the answer to the question is simple. Cultivate a life and a state of being that is constantly nourishing and being nourished with love. Love for yourself and love for all others. And you will naturally make the divine choices that will enrich your life with blessings. If one desires to be the level best that one can be, it requires the nourishment of love. There's truly no other way. The tree that is lovingly nourished yields the best fruit. We are, as the tree, all human beings, all living organisms are no different than any other. To yield the best, one has to be nourished with the best, and the best is love. Ways of love. Having a better look at love and its wondrous expressions and express characteristics, we can plainly see the wisdom and benefits of being loving for ourselves as well as others. Love is the almighty power of divine infinite source. To grasp all that it is on the level of our evolution is nearly impossible. But what we can grasp, cultivate within us, is more than sufficient to thrive in well-being and happiness and to complete our mission on earth. We all know that the virtues of love, and we all know the virtues of love, for they are written within our own souls. And we all have heard of these virtues or characteristics of love through all spiritual teachings throughout the ages. Truly, no one can plead ignorance about love. Indeed, it is the womb from which we all come. And if we didn't have the freedom of choice, we all would be radiating love all the time, like it is in the heavenly realms. In fact, it came to me one morning that the words, bring heaven upon earth, is a reminder of our mission. The heaven is a state of being, of perfect love, that is to be expressed and created on earth, by us and through us. We are to express and create that heavenly state upon earth. This is divine's will. And we obviously were confident that we can do that before we came here. Indeed, we are more than capable of doing just that. The question is, are we willing? I believe we will be willing if we could just allow our souls to recall how wonderful it is to be surrounded with love. 
and love so intimately emerged in everything. Can you recall the glory, the peace, the joy, the beauty of life and existence? And can you imagine earth and all of its inhabitants expressing love and peace and joy with effortless natural ease? I can. I can imagine it. And I have chosen to be one of those to bring that to earth so that we can experience heaven upon earth. So how can we get started in creating heaven upon earth? Well, the best place to start is with ourselves. Love and heaven is our state of being. So our state of being is a priority that must be lovingly attended to. By observing our state of being, we should ask ourselves these questions. Am I truly loving myself? Am I well nourished or malnourished with all I need to thrive in well-being? Is there any aspect of myself that has been overlooked or neglected? Am I feeling happy, safe, secure, strong within myself? Is my body functioning properly and naturally? Do I feel and see myself as a magnificent being? Am I free-flowing with the well-being of life? Do I have all I require to live a good life? Am I content in being who I am with loving acceptance? Do I feel free to shine my unique radiance? Is my relationship with infinite source divine is something I cherish? Is my thoughts predominantly positive? Do I feel enriched and abundant? Am I confident all is well? If you can say yes to these questions, then you are being fully nourished with love. If you cannot say yes, then you are malnourished and need to open the channels for love to flow into you so that you can thrive as you intended to do. The ultimate thing any one of us can do is to be a vessel in which love advises and expresses itself freely through us. It is the ultimate riches and the ultimate freedom from fears malnourishment brings. In fact, I will share this with you in plain language, so that you can consciously understand. What is considered as negative thoughts, feelings, and states of being like illness, hatred, greed, bitterness, poverty, darkness, despair, loneliness, madness, fear, loathing, and the likes, are not real existing things in the greater reality of all things. They are merely indications of a lack of abundant flow of what is truly real in reality. When one is consistently nourishing oneself with love and all its virtues, one does not experience what we call negatives. I'll give you a simple example. If one turns on the light in a dark room, the darkness disappears. So what is truly real? Is the light, of course. If the dark room or the darkness was a real thing in existence, then it would still exist even though the light was turned on. But of course it is not. So the darkness, is not a thing in itself, but merely a consequence of a lack of light. 
I give you another example. If you have an empty glass and you want a full glass, the best thing to do is to fill the glass up with water. You cannot eradicate the emptiness in the glass without filling it up with water. The emptiness is a consequence of not being filled. The same thing goes for all negative emotions, states of beings, and circumstances. We merely to fill it up with that is truly real, which is love and the virtues of divine spirit. It is important to grasp and understand that if there is any aspect of yourself and your life that is not naturally operating properly, it is because there is some aspect of yourself that is not being properly nourished with divine infinite source energy. And love is the umbilical cord that we are all connected to to receive all the things that we need to be nourished, to thrive, to flourish in well-being and in life. So take a good look at what I call your inner barometer in all aspects of yourself. Be honest about it and do yourself a favor Open up yourself to get the flow of nourishment you need to be at your best in vitality of life force energy. It is here for you. Divine Infinite Source wants you to be at your best. You just have to choose it. Open up yourself to it and allow it to flow through you filling you up, nourishing all aspects of you and your life, and benefiting all others in your life. This is the best place for you to start.